Well, welcome everyone to today's webinar. Uh, our title today is the Smart Internet of Vehicles EV Charging Network, and our presenter is Mr. Feng Ni. He's a senior project engineer on EV charging from State Grid Corporation of China. My name is Daniel Mole. I'm a senior manager for international programs at the Edison Electric Institute, and I'll be acting as a moderator for today's webinar. A couple housekeeping uh, details before we begin. If you are an EEI uh, member company employee, then we welcome you to join us on our next upcoming webinar entitled Weathering Any Storm, Preparing For and Responding to Mother Nature's Fury, which will be a presentation from Florida Power and Light about some of the work that they have done to ensure business continuity during some of the hurricanes that they experienced last year. For today's webinar, we will have time at the end for a brief question and answer period. Everyone should be able to see a Q&A panel at the right of your screen. You can uh, submit in the chat feature questions to me, and I'll do my best at the end to uh, get through as many of those questions as possible. If you're interested in staying in touch with what the Edison Electric Institute is doing through its international programs, we also invite you to subscribe to our newsletter, and that is the best way to receive updates on our programs and notices of other future webinars. So with that, I will introduce uh, Mr. Feng Ni, who is going to provide an overview of a project which received the 2018 Edison International Award, the uh, flagship industry award that EEI bestows on companies that have demonstrated exceptional leadership and innovation in our industry. The project that they received this award for was notable not only for its scale, but also a number of unique uh, integration challenges that were necessary in order to uh, bring this project online. So with that, uh, Mr. Ni, I uh, will turn the floor over to you. Okay. Yeah, good morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm Ni Feng from State Grade Nari Group, and uh, I'm staying in uh, uh, State Grade EV uh, operation company currently, and in my room uh, we have our Ms. Uh, general manager, Mr. Shen, and uh, Mr. Wu Bing from State Grade as well. So uh, glad to have uh, this opportunity to give you a presentation and to give some brief introduction of the EV industry here in China and also some strategies of state grade EV infrastructure. And uh, my presentation will consist of three parts. I think part one, where I will give some introduction about the uh, charging infrastructures and uh, the uh, uh, new energy vehicle uh, market here in China. And uh, the part two, I will give some uh, uh, introduction for the uh, uh, state grade uh, electrical vehicle service, mainly it is an uh, international vehicle platform. And uh, the last part, I will give some um, uh, the future plan and the prospect uh, of the state grade. So uh, let's go to my first part. Uh, here I have several charts which is, uh, indicate the trends uh, of uh, new electric vehicle uh, market here in China. Uh, the, this picture showing the uh, uh, sales statistics uh, in recent years, and uh, from the picture you can see um, uh, the uh, new electric vehicle market is starting up around 2012 here in China, and uh, you can see after 2014, uh, the uh, uh, the sales grows very fast, and uh, by the end of 2017, the last year, uh, the rate of sales reached 2.68%. Uh, that means it's approximately uh, uh, 700,000 uh, new energy vehicles uh, were sold uh, in Chinese market last year. And um, the next picture shows uh, the uh, volume, market volume of the uh, new electric vehicle, uh, uh, electric vehicle here in China, uh, you can see almost the same trends after 2014, 
the number is getting bigger and bigger. And uh, by the end of last year, um, we uh, the uh, uh, the uh, volume is reached to approximately 1.5 million. Uh, that is approximately 0.7% uh, 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 compared with the uh, combustion engine vehicle. And uh, this is the numbers of sales this year. You can see it also keeps growing. Uh, by the end of uh, the June, I think the number is almost reached half a million. So uh, you, from this picture, you can see the market of new energy vehicle grows very fast in recent years in China. And about the uh, uh, charging infrastructures, here I have some statistics, uh, mainly is, uh, about the uh, public uh, commercial charging infrastructures. So we have some numbers uh, now in Chinese market. Uh, there are approximately 272,000 commercial public chargers uh, were built uh, in the past years. And uh, among them, uh, there are about 56% are DC chargers, 44 are AC chargers. I think this is a little bit different with the market there in Europe and in, in the US maybe. Uh, because as I know, uh, in those countries, mainly the AC is uh, the AC chargers uh, is uh, much more than the DC chargers. But in China, especially for the public chargers, it's different because uh, you know, uh, in China, our EV market country is uh, mainly a um, policy driven market at this moment. So a lot of people buying the uh, uh, vehicles in the big cities, and uh, it is very difficult to, for them to find the parking lot to install the AC drive, AC chargers. So uh, uh, they mainly just using the DC ones. So that's the number. It's a little bit different compared with the other parts of the world. And uh, also uh, uh, among these uh, commercial chargers, about 82 percent of public access for uh, chargers, which is open to the everyone. And 18% uh, are dedicated chargers. Mm -hmm. These chargers are mainly uh, installed in the office area and some residential area. And uh, nowadays in China, we have a lot of companies uh, trying to be a so-called operation company and running the uh, infrastructures. And uh, I think in some cities, the number of these, those operation companies is more than maybe 10 or 20. But among these companies, I think uh, only five major operators uh, is the big one. I mean, uh, th those companies owned over 10,000 com commercial uh, chargers, and these companies are uh, TLD, Stay Great, Star Charging, Patavio, Psyche. Uh, so that's uh, the five major operators here in China. Um, and uh, about the profit module in China now, it's quite simple. Uh, you can see most of the uh, operation companies, uh, they just charge the uh, uh, charging fees. Uh, their income are come from the profit are come from the charging service fee, and uh, this is a very simple uh, profit model now. Uh, a lot of uh, companies here in China are trying to uh, find other ways, such as some value-added service to get more profit. But to be honest, at this moment, because uh, the number of the vehicle is still not very big. So uh, I do think none of them can make profit on other uh, value added services. The only one is the charging service fee at this moment. Here are some conclusion of the trends uh, of charging infrastructure in China. 
uh, we can see uh, now the participants are uh, diversified. In a lot of company uh, jumps into this poll, and uh, you know uh, not only the state great, uh, the great company, because in the beginning, like back to 2010, 2011, only several uh, great companies, like state great, the southern great, and some state-owned company uh, are running this kind of business. But after 2014. Uh, a lot of other companies, like uh, like the internet companies, the vehicle companies, OEMs, and the, the travel service providers are also trying to uh, join this competition. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's that's the uh, first trend. The other one is, uh, you know, because we already have so many chargers, operation companies. And so uh, the interoperability becomes uh, very uh, important for the market. And uh, the third one is uh, um, we believe the charging station will become the uh, access point of the uh, energy service. And uh, also uh, currently uh, we noticed some technology like uh, high power charging, wireless charging, and uh, other new technologies are, um, are very uh, uh, popular now, and a lot of companies uh, invest a lot of money to try to uh, uh, achieve this kind of technologies. Okay, so that's the uh, introduction of uh, the current uh, status here in China. Let's go to uh, the part two, and we will give some uh, introduction about uh, state grade EV service. So first of all, uh, let me just give a very brief introduction about state grade. Uh, state grade was uh, founded uh, on 2002. Uh, you know, before that, state grade was a government branch we were called the uh, energy, Ministry of Energy before 2002. So after 2002, it, it turns from the uh, government branch to the uh, a company. Now, state grade is, uh, I think it's the largest public utility enterprise in the world. And uh, the uh, construction and operation of the grid, power grid is their core business. And now, uh, state grid business covers uh, 26 provinces in China, and uh, covering covering more than 88 percent of land areas, and uh, do provide a service to more than 1.1 billion people. So this is, uh, I think, it now is the number two in Forbes, uh, for <coughs> so It's a quite big company now, and uh, uh, the company I'm staying in now is called the State Grade EV Service Co uh, Corporation Limited. This company is uh, wholly owned by uh, the state, state grade, subsidiary uh, company of state grade. Uh, this is a, a pretty new company which was established, uh, established at the end of 2015. And uh, the main business for this company is running a, a platform we call Internet of Vehicle Platform. And this platform can uh, 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 take the, the EV charging service, EV transportation service, and also intelligent energy service as three major business. And uh, uh, currently, uh, uh, you know, state grade start the uh, charging uh, research work, I think, starting from 2006. And after 2009, uh, start, uh, state uh, uh, starting started to invest uh, to set up the uh, uh, chargers all around in, in China. So by the end of 2017, uh, state owns more than 6,000 charging stations. Uh, here I have to uh, uh, clarify because uh, you know in China charging station is uh, similar like the gas stations uh, 
uh, in one charging station do have several chargers, maybe 10 or 20 chargers, uh, so that we call this kind of facility charging station. Uh, I think in, in the outside of China's charging station just means chargers, so this I uh, have to clarify. And also we have several uh, battery swap stations and uh, over 56,000 charging chargers have been built in, in these years. And these chargers are set up in every corner of the in China. And uh, besides these public chargers, we also set up uh, uh, char fast charging networks uh, along the highway. Uh, currently, uh, we have finished this in building the uh, uh, chargers around 18 highways here in China, and we call it nine vertical, nine horizontal, and two rings. So altogether, I think 18 or 20 highways covered. And uh, in, along these highways, we have more than 1,400 uh, fast charging stations uh, in the uh, highway service area, I think, and uh, cover the range of 31,000 kilometers and uh, also uh, provide a service. Along these highways, we do have uh, more than uh, 150 cities, and these stations are built, the distance between these stations and many, uh, the average distance, I think, is about 50 kilometers. So except, except the building the chargers, Stigrid also provides the, uh, the uh, power supply service to other operation companies or to the owner of the chargers. So we do some expansion work of our distribution networks. Uh, currently, uh, our grid are connected around 101 million units, and uh, the uh, uh, capacity of the grid uh, is expanded to uh, 1,800 gigawatts. And that covers at least the six, more than 600 residential areas. And uh, we also uh, provide the power supply to uh, over 10,000 parking lots in 18 cities. And the uh, state grid are also very uh, active in standardization. And we uh, Led by State Grid Expert Group, currently we just, uh, we published uh, three IEC international standards, 22 uh, national standards, 27 industry standards, and more than 60 uh, enterprise standards. These are all about the uh, the you know the char charging infrastructure, the chargers, construction of the uh, uh, charging stations, etc. And uh, also, state grid invest, uh, uh, and um, also uh, state grid uh, are very uh, attached to great importance on the uh, R&D of the uh, key technologies of uh, the charging and, or, and battery swap stations. Uh, now, uh, we, uh, some of the R&D centers uh, within state grid they are developing uh, the chargers starting from 7 kilowatts to uh, 440, 50 kilowatts, and also uh, doing some research on the so-called smart charging and uh, discharging, and the uh, class control charging and high power charging, and also the wireless chargers. And uh, StateGrid has built the uh, world's largest charging network cloud platform this uh, platform are running by the EV service company uh, here uh, in Beijing. And this system now is connected to, to uh, over uh, 200,000 chargers. And uh, we do have approximately 1 million users registered. And uh, 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 now it's finished uh, about 32 million charged, and uh, the amount of the electricity is uh, reached to uh, six, 
almost 8 million kilowatt hour. And uh, the carbon reductions is about 800,000 tons and saved uh, 350 million liters of gas. And uh, this system also integrates several uh, mobile apps, uh, more functions like e-charging, which you can use in mobile cell phone to, to, to charge, uh, find the charging chargers and charger cars, and also provide the function of uh, the uh, car reservation. Uh, people can rent a car from the, uh, this platform. And also, we have a car mall where, where you can buy it and sell your energy, uh, new energy vehicle, vehicle, uh, vehicles. Uh, so besides all these functions, uh, and state grades also very interested in the uh, energy storage. So a uh, energy storage system is connected to this platform, and uh, now it uh, connect to some industrial commercial energy storage power stations and also some household energy storage equipment. In the, in the future, I think electrical vehicle and other energy storage facilities will also connect to these systems. Now, it's, uh, I think it's about three, 30 million words uh, energy storage system is connect to this system. So the last part is about the uh, future development planning and prospect. Uh, Safebridge wants to uh, build a so-called charging plus service ecosystem uh, in the future. This system will consist of three parts. One, the first one is charging network, which we already have built in, in China. And uh, also we want to integrate the transportation network and uh, of course, smart grid will be one important part of this ecosystem. And uh, uh, our goal is uh, to build a national, nationwide charging networks uh, uh, in China. And so, uh, uh, we we need to increase in the uh, access number of the chargers. Uh, in the future. So this can be done by three ways. One is to strengthen the uh, construction of the public charging networks, which we are doing now. And also, we will provide a solution of, for the uh, private chargers, private residential area chargers. And, uh, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, we will provide the roaming access which will allow the other third parties uh, chargers to connect to our systems. And uh, so besides of all the service I mentioned, a uh, new area uh, is also, uh, we are also very interested in, is uh, show powers. Uh, you know, in China we have several big rivers and also we have a very long coast area. So, the coastline, and uh, now uh, we, State Grid has invested a lot of money in this area. We want to uh, uh, connect uh, the show power systems also into uh, our internal vehicle platform. And the uh, <coughs> energy storage option model uh, uh, here is a picture showing the uh, uh, mm, our future plan. So we w basically we want to integrate uh, the energy storage uh, systems into into our system also. So our goal is to promoting the clean energy consumption. Uh, so by uh, integrating the uh, demand from the EV charging manufacturer, the vehicle OEMs, and the other green energy enterprise. And uh, we want to carry out the clean electricity trading and sales to promote the uh, clean energy consumption of the whole industry chain. So that's our goal. 
Okay, this is uh, some brief reflection of uh, of state grid uh, business, uh, EV business, and also the some situations here in China. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, thank you. Thank you for that wonderful overview. Um, I have a few questions here in front of me that I've received, but I'll use this opportunity to remind participants that you can continue to submit questions using the chat feature, and I will do my best to get through as many of them as possible. Um, so, uh, Fung, thank you so much for that uh, introduction. I wanted to start with a question about uh, the investments that have been made to uh, prepare the distribution network infrastructure to handle the charging requirement of not only all of the light duty vehicles that you mentioned, uh, you know, you mentioned I think a million and a half EVs on the road, but uh, I understand that there's also uh, a large fleet of e-buses that have been deployed. There's quite a number of electric two-wheelers in China, and you also mentioned uh, electrifying other forms of transportation. And so, uh, you know, there's, in many places, uh, there's, there's a physical solution to managing the impact on the grid and overloading of heaters that may occur uh, through, uh, you know, hardening efforts that can be made. There, there are also uh, behavioral solutions to try and manage charging uh, and to shift charging. And I'm aware of, in a few instances, also some operational approaches to uh, change the way that the network is optimized and reconfigured when periods of congestion are encountered. So could you provide some information on what sort of challenges you've experienced so far from charging and uh, any issues with fault or overloading, and what has been the solution that you've pursued in that regard? Okay, I think uh, our general manager, Mr. Shen, will give the answer. So please give me a few minutes to translate it to him, okay? Sure. Okay, here you go. Uh, I'll just use this moment to thank everybody that is sending in questions. I've already received a number, which is wonderful, so uh, continue to send those in. Okay, Mr. Wu from State Grid, he will give the answer in Chinese. I'll do the translation. Okay. 有效地提升这个电网的这个供给能力，这些就是有效提升这个电网对电动汽车的这个支撑能力，主要就这样。So basically, uh, State Grid uh, wants to resolve these issues in two ways. First of all, of course, in the physical way, we will expand our uh, uh, distribution networks in the future by uh, you know to 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 expand the uh, power capacity of the uh, 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 of the uh, uh, distribution network. The second way, which is we are also researching now, is using the uh, um, we call it uh, uh, um, co coordinate charging to uh, control the charging uh, powers. Um, normally, uh, we will install uh, some kind of uh, equipment in the. Uh, um, distribution transformers and to monitoring the uh, load and this this kind of uh, 
um, signals, this kind of meter, metering signals will be sent to the chargers. And by so-called smart charging technology, we were trying to control the uh, charging powers. So uh, that's uh, the true way we want to do now. And in the future, maybe some kind of uh, uh, charging load focus uh, algorithm will be also used to focus the charges to, you know, to distribute, to balance the distribution load. So that's the ways we are trying to do now. One follow-up question on that. If there is a need to take a uh, station offline or to curtail charging from a, a private charger in a residential uh, location, it, do customers have a choice on, do, can they opt in or out of that decision? Or, and secondly, is that reflected in the uh, IOV platform where people see available public chargers, would they see that information about uh, which chargers are currently available? Uh, okay. So uh, actually, uh, now, as I mentioned in my presentations, uh, uh, almost all the uh, chargers uh, built by StayGrid are connected to our OV systems, and all the uh, data uh, which are me uh, which are uh, acquired by these chargers will send to the IOV platform. So all the users who has the uh, uh, apps can see uh, the working condition of these chargers including the uh, charging powers, the uh, charging flows, etc. I think in the future, some of the uh, uh, grid information will be also transferred to this app so, so that people will know the, the, the uh, working environment of these charges as, as well. All right, thank you. I have a couple questions here which are related to EV sales. Um, one question, uh, about uh, you can comment on you know what incentives have uh, from your understanding been most impactful on EV purchases and secondly um, has there been any noticeable impact on EV sales after any changes that were made to subsidies on EVs um, with low mileage uh, earlier this year. Uh, what do you mean low mileage? mileage? You, you um, mean the low mileage uh, vehicles uh, it's, uh, uh, do not uh, have a very good future? Is that what you mean? Well, I think that the question was just um, aware of some changes recently and some of the incentives okay. provided for EVs and was wanting to know okay. if that has impacted sales. Okay, okay. Just a minute.
Okay. As you mentioned in your questions, so you're right. Currently, our our market is kind of a policy-driven market. Now, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, a lot of people buy the vehicles because of the subsidy and also uh, some in other in incentives uh, issued by the local government. Uh, and uh, as, I know, as we know so far, uh, this kind of subsidy policy will stop very soon, maybe in two or three years. The subsidy will go to almost zero. Uh, but uh, in this transient area, uh, stage, uh, the, there are still some uh, incentives, like uh, uh, the, you do not um, uh, need to charge in the uh, toll, toll station, something like this, some bridges. And also, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we still have some policies for the car OEMs which they have to fulfill the requirement of the, uh, 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 the gas consumption um, ratio. Uh, they should uh, lower than, let's say, uh, seven liters or something like this. They, they have to pr produce the uh, new energy vehicle instead of uh, the consumption vehicle only. So uh, in the long term, we think um, this, the price of the new energy vehicle will get down and maybe after the subsidy is getting lower, it will have some impact in very long, short terms. But in the long term, uh, these sales will come back because of the cheaper and the new, uh, the uh, uh, green vehicle will be uh, 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 will be very cheap and very convenient for the, for the uh, users. So at that time, the sales will become normal. Again. All right, thank you. I wanted to move to a question uh, that maybe relates to the slides you presented about the energy storage uh, functions that you are seeking to develop. I was not sure if the uh, services to the grid that were mentioned on those slides were envisioned to come from vehicle batteries as the storage solution. and. And so at the moment, uh, could you provide information about to what degree vehicle-to-grid uh, interactivity has been uh, tested uh, at state grid? Uh, has that been deployed in any commercial setting? And one moment, let me uh, confirm this with them. Uh, so about the energy storage system, currently uh, connect to our systems are mainly the uh, traditional energy storage systems. Uh, and uh, about the vehicle battery energy storage, uh, currently is under research and we had to finish some tests and uh, uh, it, it, uh, it, it also been um, uh, tested and uh, in the in the by the end of this year, uh, some of the uh, pilot project will be running in the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, electric vehicle battery and the storage system will connect to our IOV system in the end of, by the end of this year. Um, but this is only for for the pilot project. Uh, if we're talking about a commercial. Uh, use case, I think it would still cost some time because, uh, you know, currently uh, most of the electrical vehicles are not support the bio-direction uh, charging. I mean, they can cannot discharge at this moment. 
But yeah. uh, uh, we believe in the future uh, this function will be implemented uh, in the vehicles, but not now. So this, at this stage, is only the test for the technology. Okay, thank you. Um, a, a question here about battery swapping. Uh, is that something that Sacred is exploring currently or considering in the future to uh, develop and uh, work with uh, battery swapping stations for either light duty vehicles or for buses and public transportation? One moment. Uh, you, uh, you know, uh, State Grid has uh, invested a lot of money a few years ago to build the uh, battery swap stations. And uh, some of the uh, battery swap stations are still running, especially uh, for the electrical bus. And uh, also, currently uh, in China, we have uh, uh, several companies are still trying to uh, 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 promote the uh, uh, battery swap technology in the uh, passenger cars. As we know so far in China, uh, in Beijing, and Bike and several other companies are running a, a small network for battery swap uh, technologies uh, in, in, for taxis. And uh, uh, StateWeight will still focus on this, uh, this technology. We believe battery swap uh, in the future is still one important technology for the uh, energy uh, for for the energy uh, uh, for the uh, uh, for the electrical vehicle, and uh, and uh, we will focus on this technology, and also we will uh, um, we will uh, um, exchange our ideas with the uh, uh, vehicle OEMs, see what <coughs> their technology will be. Uh, so. Uh, um, in one word, uh, state grid will ready for every new technology. Okay, thanks. I have a question here about billing and payments through the IOB platform. You described a, uh, a platform that integrates together uh, the infrastructure that is owned and operated by separate companies. Uh, and then also within the same ecosystem, there are functions for uh, ride sharing and car reservations and other services that customers uh, might be interested in uh, purchasing. Does Sacred EV handle, are they the uh, clearinghouse for all of the billing and the payments for all of those different uh, companies that are on the same platform? Uh, one moment.
Currently, uh, our ROV uh, platform uh, are connected with several other companies. We share in the uh, monitoring data only at this stage. Uh, for the payment, uh, we already the technology is already ready, uh, and uh, actually we will um, be a clearing house in the future, but not this time. Okay, so not yet, but that is the the plan that with, with that one application that a customer can uh, from that one place uh, handle all of their billing and payments for any of those services. Actually, uh, now uh, you have mentioned the roaming charging. The roaming charging service, we are not using, uh, we are not running like this. The, the uh, basic uh, uh, logic is like this. Uh, people, if you want charging your, uh, using the service, uh, not to, uh, provided by your own uh, uh, charging service provider, uh, they just using their apps to scan the um, chargers uh, for example, you are the user belong to uh, Potavio. You want to use state grid chargers. You just start your apps with Potavio char chargers, uh, Potavio apps to uh, access the electrical, uh, uh, to access the state grid chargers. Uh, the, the system will working like this. Uh, the, uh, the, the user can use Potavio apps to open the charging service from state grid, and the user will pay the Potavio company, and the Potavio uh, will pay the, the state grid. So it's uh, something like the roaming service of a uh, uh, cell phone company. So people do not need to directly pay the state grid. Uh, they just need to pay what we are belong. So this uh, is our logic. So in this stage, this is also is, is already achieved, um, but uh, uh, but it's not like you said the payment is directly to the state grade. So so that's the uh, our working flow now. Okay, thank you. I have another question here about the charging behavior of uh, EV owners in China. You mentioned that the vast majority of the charging that is being installed are, are fast chargers, but they're public chargers too. Uh, and uh, this question uh, from one of our participants wanted to know uh, a little bit more information about the charging behavior of uh, EV owners in China. In, in the United States, for example, we have the majority of charging taking place at home or at the workplace, uh, but is that different in China? And uh, can you comment at all on what trends you have noticed about how charging stations are being used most commonly? Uh, actually, uh, in China, we have uh, several kind of uh, users. The, the, uh, the users, Live in the huge cities like Beijing, Shanghai. Um, they are, most of them by vehicle is driven by the policies because in these cities it's very difficult to, for them to buy uh, uh, the uh, combust combustion engine vehicles. Uh, these people uh, normally do not have the parking, the fixed parking lot, so they just use the fast chargers or, or maybe once or twice a week to get the energy. Uh, but uh, in some other smaller cities, like my hometown, Nanjing, they are different. This is similar like uh, in, in the U.S., in the Europe. Uh, most of them are using the AC chargers instead of the fast chargers. So we have different kinds of markets here in China. So, so uh, that's the uh, uh, conditions here in China. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask also for some clarification about the shore power uh, that you referenced. Mm -hmm. Was that a reference to electrifying uh, sea transportation and ferries and freight or something else? No, it, it's just uh, when, when the ship uh, uh, stopped in the harbor, uh, they get power from the shore stop their combustor engine, that's all. Not, not the electrified uh, transportation, it's just to uh, get the uh, 
power supply when they when they are parked in the, in the harbor. Okay, I understand. Okay, thank you. Um, I think I'll just try and do uh, a couple more questions. I wanted to ask about uh, the data that is being uh, received uh, through the IOV platform and all of the charging uh, that is occurring in this system. How is that cap how is that data being captured and utilized and what insights have you been able to learn from that? Okay, one moment. Uh, you, you know, uh, currently um, we can get a uh, lot of data from the uh, chargers, uh, and not only the charging data, but also some data from the battery. Uh, you know, the BMS will also send some data of battery uh, data to the system. So uh, uh, we will analyze all these uh, uh, data, especially uh, for the data from the batteries. This, this kind of data we will share with OEMs and battery uh, um, and battery uh, manufacturers to uh, trace their uh, lifetime of the uh, batteries and also doing some analysis of the uh, um, of the electrical vehicle itself and and uh, and uh, the secondly uh, through in, uh, the uh, big data analysis we will know the behavior of the uh, users. For example, uh, the uh, charging habit, uh, uh, how many times they, they want to charge normally where they stay. So we will analyze this, this kind of data. Um, you know, this data maybe is very uh, important in the future for value added service. But as I mentioned in my presentation, this that kind of analysis is only the beginning because we do not have a real big data now. This, uh, we only have one million registered users. It's not still big enough at this time moment. So we are just testing our technology for the big data analysis. Certainly, uh, it, after we get this data, we can also uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to provide a guide of the investment in the future. For example, where is the uh, good uh, location for the uh, for the for build a new charger, etc. So this kind of data can uh, this kind of analysis will will also uh, will 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 get will will be done uh, in the future and uh, to uh, help us to to uh, expand our business. So that's our intention and uh, what we want to do in the future. Okay, thank you. I have uh, another question here about the uh, 450 kW DC charges that you referenced were uh, either under research and development or were something that you are currently testing. Uh, when do you expect to start installing uh, those chargers? Actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, overseas, I mean, Europe and the, in the U.S., uh, you're also uh, discussing about the high power chargers uh, starting from 350 kilowatts. Uh, these kind of chargers are mainly provide service for uh, the passenger cars. The 450 kilowatts chargers I mentioned in my presentation is for the bus. 
you know, the bus, the capacity of the battery is sort of much more bigger than the passenger cars. So uh, uh, this, this 450 is not uh, exactly the high power charging, I believe. From the charger side, it, you're right, this is uh, the high power charging, but uh, in the vehicle side, because the capacity of the battery is um, very big, some of the uh, uh, bat, uh, bus do have more than 200 kilowatt hours capacity. So in this case, this is uh, not very big chargers. Uh, this charger is already implemented a few years ago in China, uh, in some part of, uh, um, um, uh, of China, uh, in Sichuan province, Chongqing, I believe. Uh, except this kind of vehicle, we also have some fast charging vehicles which are using very special batteries like uh, the T Titan, uh, yeah, I forgot the name, the Titan uh, batteries. Uh, this can uh, survive under, let's say, over 60 uh, charging. So uh, for these uh, special vehicles, we uh, also use this kind of chargers. <laughs> this kind of chargers has been used for more than three years, I believe. Thank you. Okay, I think this will be my last question. Um, if you uh, take sort of a step back and, and reflect on uh, the last several years of building out the infrastructure that you have to manage all of this charging. Are there any uh, challenges that you account encountered along the way that were unexpected? And how did you uh, address that challenge? And secondly, as your team is looking out into the future and the forecast for uh, continued growth in electric vehicles, uh, what are some of your top priorities for the, the challenges that you anticipate from that expanding market for EVs that you will be managing on, on this system? So what was the first question again? The first question would be um, when, you, when you think back uh, over the last few years, were there any challenges or uh, issues that you had to confront that were unanticipated, that you did not expect, but were okay. um, uh, either a technical or a, uh, a systems integration or a planning issue that, that was more difficult than expected? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, one moment. Uh. Uh, so the uh, biggest challenge we experienced uh, by now, is, we believe, uh, is the uh, um, the number of the uh, users and number of the new electrical vehicles is still very small. Uh, that will have very huge impact to our business models. As I mentioned in your presentation, the only perfect model now is just the uh, electricity. Uh, the value added. Uh, um, perfect model is very difficult because of the, the small number of the users. So this is the very the big the, the biggest challenge we we have by now. And uh, in the future, I think the biggest things one is uh, we we will uh, we have to expansion our charging networks uh, in the future. And also we need to. Uh, in keep improve, improving our uh, service quality and to provide a better service to the users so that we can earn more uh, users and uh, connect more uh, chargers into our network. That will help our business models in the future. Wonderful. Um, 
Well, uh, Fung, I want to thank you and the whole team and your, your general manager there for taking the time today to share uh, with our audience around the world uh, some information about the work that you're doing. It was uh, wonderfully, wonderfully informative, and so I uh, just wanted to uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to speak with us today. For all of our participants, thank you also for joining. We will send out by email the, a copy of the presentation and a link to the recording of the presentation once it is uploaded to our YouTube channel. So with that, I'll conclude today's webinar. Thank you all for joining.